Hey guys, it's Miss K and our little snail friend. You have to name him, so give me some suggestions. Um, I wanted to explain to you our lesson for the week. Um, it is lesson 1.2 from Amplify's Environment and Survival Unit, which I am so excited about. You guys know this. Um, I'm going to share the slides so that we can talk a little bit about what we're doing. Okay. All right. So we're going to be going through the slides so that you can kind of um, see what we're doing, just like we've been doing. So we are now talking about what organisms need for survival. So before we can move on, we're going to touch again on what an organism is. Well, uh, organisms are living things such as plants and animals, which you see here. Uh, the grow snails are organisms we are investigating in this unit. So when we look back at our snail data, and we're talking about the bar graphs, and we're just kind of looking at what's happening, right? So there's um, 10 year difference, and when you're looking at the data, there are 410 growth snails, and now there are 80. And 10 years ago, there were 300 banded snails, and now there's 575. So something must be happening, and we need to know why. What is happening? Why are the growth snails not surviving and thriving? So when we're talking about surviving, we're talking about staying alive. So to figure out why the snails with yellow shells aren't surviving well, we first need to figure out why some organisms in a population may be more likely to survive or less likely to survive. So I'm gonna be putting all the vocabulary up in a resources tab for you, just so that we have everything together. And before we move on, I want us to think about all organisms or living things that you know about, including yourself. What do you think organisms need to survive? So I'm going to pause so that you can think of your answers. Think about all the things that you need. Think about your favorite animal. What do you think they need to stay alive, to survive? If you said air, you'd be correct. Avoiding predators. Now, we don't usually have that problem, but if I were getting chased by a dog on the street, I would say that that's a similar problem. Food, water, and shelter. Those are all really important no matter what environment that you're living in, okay? So we need to really think about, are the snails getting all of these things? What is happening in this environment? So the bar graph showed us that over time, there were fewer snails with yellow shells in the population. A lot of the snails with the yellow shells oops, didn't survive. So to help us figure out what happened to the snails in the yellow shells, we are going to investigate this question. What makes organisms in a population more likely to survive or less likely to survive, okay? Now you're gonna have your investigation notebook. Almost all of you have it, so you're gonna follow in that. If you would prefer to write inside of your investigation notebook and then send me a picture of your work, that's fine. If not, and you don't have your book, that's okay too, because I'm going to post it on Google Classroom and you can just type inside of the document, not a problem. So we're gonna be keeping track of our investigations in there so that we can make sense of our thinking. So now we're going to investigate how organisms meet their needs for survival. And usually we would be working with a partner for this, but you can't really do that. So you can either work on your own or with a family member to consider whether or not your organism can meet its needs. 
and therefore survive or stay alive in different environments. So you're gonna think about your organism's need for food, water, and avoiding predators. Also, depending on which organism you investigate, you're going to think about its needs for space or its need to live in certain temperatures. All these things, all these needs must be met in order for your organism to stay alive. So after you and um, a family member um, discuss how your organism might survive in each of these environments, you are going to then let me know what you guys discuss. Now, I'm giving you the option of choosing one of four. Normally in school, I would just kind of give you one, but you can choose either the red-eyed tree frog, the pocket gopher, the red fox, or the garter snake. So you get to choose from those four um, organisms which one you want to focus on with the four environments that we are going to look at. So now the four environments are the desert, tropical forest, grassland, or alpine tundra. So you're going to go through all of these environments and really um, observe what are they like, okay? They each have um, different physical characteristics, they have different temperature, they have um, different amounts of rain, there are different living things there, different plants, different animals. Hmm, well, I would have to think, is this the best environment for the animal that I chose, okay? So when you're thinking about needs in a certain environment, I want you guys to kind of connect it to something else that you're doing. So I know that you're reading the, um, the text collection about the Athabascans. The Athabascans live in Alaska. If I just picked you up right now and brought you to Alaska, would you have everything that you need to survive in that environment? The answer is no, right? So think about all those things. You would need boots, maybe waterproof boots, a coat, things with a lot of fur. Um, do they have stores to go shopping at? No, they have to find their food. They have to preserve their food. They don't even have refrigerators. They use the ice, right? So you have to think about if I were an animal that needed to live in an Arctic place, would I survive in the desert? Probably not. So you really have to look through each one of those environments and see, is this the right place for the organism that I chose? So we're gonna use um, the common color lizard as an example, just so I can show you how to read through it and what you need to think about. So this is the example organism card, and um, you're going to look at its needs for survival, okay? What food does it eat? It eats insects, including grasshoppers and crickets. So you're going to need to think, well, the environment that that needs is going to need to have insects. If it doesn't have insects, the colored lizard won't survive there. Water, only needs a little bit of water to drink occasionally. So it's not thirsty all the time. Avoid predators. So its predators are road runners and coyotes. So you need to make sure that you are looking at those and seeing what do they need to avoid. And temperature, needs to live in areas with warm temperature so it can keep its body warm. That's a big factor. So let's think about whether the common colored lizard can meet its needs in the desert. So now let's look, what is it like in this environment? The deserts can be, can be a harsh environment because it is very warm and dry but many plants and animals live there. Temperature, warm throughout the year, very hot in the summer. Rain, not much rain. Plants, cacti, small shrubs. Animals, mice, hawks, coyotes, and insects. We stop and think for a little bit. What do you think about the desert as a potential home environment for the colored lizard? What do you think? So we need to go in, right? Now the best thing to do is read and reread. Well, I know that the common colored lizard needs to eat insects. I'm looking at the desert, does it have insects? Yes, it does. So far, that's one check. The lizard doesn't need much water. Does the desert have a lot of water? No, deserts don't get a lot of rain. I think less than 10 inches a year. So it says they need a little bit of water, not much rain so far check for that as well. Hmm, avoiding predators. I remember reading coyote 
in the list of animals that live in the desert? Yep, right here. So that's not really so great, but I think that it could find maybe a shrub or a cactus to maybe hide under or behind. So it could hide or run away, especially if it's um, the temperature that works for the collared lizard, which is warm temperature, which is exactly what the desert has. So this is what you guys are going to do with the animal that you choose, okay? So now what we just did was making an inference, okay? Um, when you're talking about an inference, you're talking about something that most likely is true based on evidence that you have. So when we're reading, this is our question. How likely do you think it is that your organism would survive in each environment? Before we jump into that, let's do a couple examples about something that is likely to happen. So look at this picture. Think about what you're noticing. Don't tell me what it is yet. Just pause and observe it. I'm noticing a lot of clouds. I don't really see the sun. It kind of looks gloomy. They look really full and puffy. So I'm going to infer that maybe they are filled with water and they are ready to explode. And do you think it is likely to rain in this place? Why or why not? I'm going to say yes, because it looks like it's a dark day, like there's about to be a storm. I don't have any data that says rain happened on this day, but I'm going to infer that. Let's do another example. So imagine you're picking one of these marbles with your eyes closed, okay? So you cover your eyes, there's a bag, all of these marbles are inside, you go in and you pick one out. Well, are you likely to pick a red marble? Why or why not? The likelihood of you picking a red marble is really small because probability, there's so many more green marbles in there. So you guys are learning about fractions in third grade. Think about the fraction of the red marble in the group compared to the green marbles in the group. So what you can do is think about that. Are you more likely to pick the red one or a green one? Probably green, right? And that's okay, but we are inferring that, okay? Is this fish likely to survive in this environment? Let's think. Probably not, right? But why? I see water. Is that enough water? It's not, right? So this fish most likely will not survive. So you have to think about that for the organism that you chose. What we were doing was inferring. Um, inferring. So an inference is something you figure out based on observations of what you already know. We know that rain comes from um, filled clouds, right? The water cycle. The water evaporates up and the clouds get full and then they're ready to fill up and then fall back down. Okay, we know that fish live in water. So obviously a fish is going to need plenty of water to survive. So this is the page of your investigation notebook where you are going to make your inferences. Okay, whether or not your organism is likely to survive in each one. So up here it says um, the tropical forest, you're gonna fill that in. And then the next one is the grassland. Then it says, how well do you think your organism could meet its needs in each environment? Circle whether it is likely or not likely to survive. We can make an inference about the common colored lizard surviving in the desert. So we did this together, food, yeah, I think there are insects there. Water, should be enough water. So we circled yes. Can it avoid predators? That's a maybe. We do know that the coyotes live there. Now, some of them might have different, um, a different focus. Um, maybe it's not temperature, but if it were temperature, I would say yeah, right? So organism, common collared lizard. You are not doing the common colored lizard. You are choosing one of those other four. Is it likely or not likely to survive in a desert environment? 
we have deduced that yes, it is most likely 